Hi folks, I got three weeks left before I leave for Peru and I want to put out a couple more important videos before I go. I realized here recently that one of the mistakes I've been making in my video presentations was not considering that some people may not have the prerequisite knowledge to follow along with what I'm saying. So um, I'm going to take a little more time in this presentation to uh, give you the more of the details. There are lots of types of radiation and the ones that I'm concerned about here are the heavy particles like neutrinos that are charged. This is the geomagnetic KP index from the suspicious observers and you can see here that the safe zone is actually fairly narrow in there and that when we have a lot of geomagnetic instability the health risks go up and you can pause the video here and read all the health risks when when we get out of the safe zone now this graph here shows the increase in the amount of cosmic rays we've received from 1998 to 2016 this chart here shows that in 2008 we took a major deviation from the projected course and you can see here from this graph that that coincides with the rapid shift in the magnetic north pole and both of those are related to the decreasing magnetic polarity of our Sun here's some symptoms of radiation sickness and you can pause the video and take a look at that now obviously our DNA is going to take some uh, radiation damage too but this is actually an opportunity for us to fight this stuff here's the ticket to controlling our genetics right here science has now discovered that we have 22 genetically coded amino acids and I'll let's just stop the video here and read about that now notice in this slide that deficiency in selenium uh, causes lean body mass uh, prone to premature aging and heart disease now that sounds like a basic uh, body metabolism malfunction to me okay in this slide you can see that it has pH balancing and electrical functions in the body it's important in the uh, manufacturing of vitamins in the body and it also uh, en enhances uh, liver functions and for detoxing and things now of the plant sources listed there's only one that has a lot of selenium in it the best source of selenium is Brazil nuts which interestingly comes from the Amazon and Brazil nuts are 2500 times the selenium of other sources of uh, selenium I read a study where they gave uh, patients one or two Brazil nuts a day for a couple of months and all of them had improvements in their health now the biosynthesis of selenocysteine <coughs> takes place on the transfer RNA in the DNA replication process now notice that the cofactor is a peroxidal uh, phosphate now, I covered phosphates pretty extensively in my battery research videos but the same principles and functions apply in the human body because we're talking about uh, energy production in the body you can see the whole basic process here and you can stop the video to study that at your leisure now I have to talk about a heated subject which is glyphosate now notice that glyphosate is actually a modified phosphate everybody by now should be pretty aware of the dangers of glyphosate but you can uh, stop the video and read this if you'd like now you can take magnesium glycinate which is actually a simple and practical way that you can fight the glyphosate in your body this works because glyphosate substitutes itself for glycine in the protein structure magnesium glycinate is magnesium bound to glycine and magnesium is incredibly important in the body's metabolism because it partakes in over 275 
uh, chemical reactions. I'll get back to the magnesium in a bit, but in this uh, chart right here you can see the interaction between uh, glycine, serine, cysteine, and taurine in the body along with the uh, vitamin B vitamins and the melathion and glutathione uh, antioxidant system. I'm just going to briefly mention right here the, about the acids and bases in the body and how important it is to buffer the body so that the pH of the body remains neutral for good health. If it gets high or low, and it usually gets way low, uh, you're going to have health problems. If it drops down to about 5 pH, you're going to die, basically. I'm almost to the nitty gritty here, folks, so bear with me. Uh, we have to talk about comas and the feeding solution they give you while you're in a coma and can't eat. Uh, here's what they feed you in the hospital if you're in a coma and uh, notice all the magnesium sulfate and the potassium phosphate. Those have to be in there because of the importance of magnesium and sulfur and phosphorus in the body. I can't give you folks medical advice but I take Epsom salts every day and if you take too much of it it'll give you diarrhea but it's not going to hurt you and as a matter of fact if you get constipated that's a good way to get rid of the constipation just consuming Epsom salt every day has made a big difference in my uh, health here's the vitamin regimen they give you if you're in a coma I'm going to show you some concentrated natural sources of these vitamins one excellent source of vitamins is wheat germ which is just the uh, DNA part of the wheat seed. Wheat germ is uh, pretty inexpensive too and you don't get all the extra carbohydrates that you don't really need. If you're going to eat wheat it's good to sprout the wheat first so you can convert some of those carbohydrates into fiber and other important nutrients. You can't really have a comprehensive discussion about good health without talking about calorie restriction and intermittent fasting. Caloric restriction is the only known method of increasing lifespan across the board in every animal that they've tested. Now don't worry too much about what all those things mean in the chart. Just know that they're all good. And the one we're going to talk about is autophagy. This diagram here shows the autophage process in the body, which is the process that gets rid of the damaged and uh, malfunctioning cells that are in the body. Now this is obviously important for the repair of the bodily tissues but if the body doesn't have the proper nutrition to support the process then the process isn't going to work very well. One of the obvious limiting factors to cell growth is the structural material that the cell is built out of because all the organs in the cell are embedded in that structural material. Lecithin is the best food product I've found for promoting a healthy cell growth. You can also buy lecithin in uh, powder or granular form too which has less oil in it and that's better for long-term storage. I make raw salads and this is an excellent topping for uh, on top of salads. Lecithin is actually a manufacturing byproduct it's removed from the cell walls of plants. This chart here shows the importance of the structural materials in the bone. In my opinion, most of our health problems can be traced back to this dysfunctional calcium and magnesium balance in our bodies. This nearly killed me at 58, right at my second Saturn return, and I thought I was eating good. I suggest you watch Dr. Levy's a YouTube video called Death by Calcium for more information. It's important. Now calcium is very important in the body for maintaining pH when you're, which is around neutral and your body will do everything it can to keep your body at neutral pH including pulling all the calcium out of your bones. In a nutshell you want to get your calcium from leafy green vegetables and not milk. Milk is for infants purpose of this picture here is to show you 
how important the elements and vitamins are in the processes in the body, even from converting protein into uh, hormones like serotonin. Now let's look at the importance of magnesium and vitamin D, which we get from sunlight in processes in the body. Notice that magnesium is important for the production of vitamin D. It's important for the production of parathyroid hormone. It's important for the uh, calcium absorption. And it's important for the calcium distribution. As I said earlier, magnesium is involved in over 275 biochemical reactions. In this picture, you can see that the parathyroid gland, which utilizes selenium, is actually part of the thyroid gland, which is, uses iodine. The recommended daily allowance for iodine in the body is a few micrograms. I've taken 10 milligrams at one time, no ill effects. And that's because these two organs function together to process selenium and iodine for the purpose of repairing our DNA. Now there are several types of DNA repair, but I'm just going to focus on one. A chromosome in a cell can only reproduce itself so many times before it dies, because each time it reproduces, the telomeres at the end of the chromosomes get shorter. And this is called the Hayflack limit, and it's about 50 reproductions. But that is the primary reason that cells die. If you can lengthen those telomeres, or keep those telomeres long, you can live way longer. Now the Kickstarter for this DNA repair process is a substance called sulfurafan, which is found in the brassica family of plants, especially in broccoli. And that's because sulfurafan uh, activates this mTOR metabolic pathway. Now I'm running out of time here, so I have to cut it short, but bee pollen is an incredible food that you can nearly live on all by itself. Unfortunately, the honeybee population is rapidly declining. Another important compact and concentrated survival food is uh, acacia fiber. And that's important to feed your gut bacteria, which then your gut bacteria feed you important nutrients. There are other things we can do to support better health, like sleeping on an inclined surface, which forces your heart to pump more blood during the night. And that helps with detoxifying the body and doing cellular repair while you sleep. The ancient Egyptians obviously knew this. In a modern version of this bed, you could use a uh, lever and a camshaft to raise the bed for sleeping and lowering the bed for sex. We can also use magnets to influence our health, which is why I've built a magnetic field around my bed. Another way to influence our health is to experiment around with our uh, body's electrical system. You can watch my bioelectric videos to see what I've already done with this. One of the interesting things about the bioelectric currents in the body is they can be correlated to the chakras of the body. And these energy systems in the body can be correlated to symbology. So theoretically, we should be able to use astrology or tarot to predict possible problems with people based on their natal charts or transiting planets. Here's a picture of me I had taken yesterday. I'm 67 years old and I'm healthier today than I was when I was 50. That's it for now folks. I'll see you next time.